Hi guys, it's Workweek 48. I'm Rick Blau and this is the third in the series of the Trees short course. Let's talk about functional language. If you remember from last time, an engineering system or process was designed to perform a certain task, or in Trees terms we call it the main useful function. I mentioned in the previous video blog that functionality and functional modeling could be a bit tricky so let's walk through some functional language examples to help clarify. Remember the format? Subject, action, object. Here we have a simple system, a bottle of liquid sitting on a table. How do we state this system interaction in functional language? In the subject, action, object format, we would say, table holds bottle. Now, let's focus on the bottle itself. How about the functional language to describe the interaction of the bottle and the liquid? We would say, bottle holds liquid. Good. Now, let's describe the functional language for the cap. What would you say? Did you say, cap seals bottle? Unfortunately, in tree's language, that doesn't work. and brings us to rule number one. Rule one says the action must change a parameter of the object. In the case of the cap and the bottle, the cap does nothing to the bottle itself. It changes no parameter of the bottle. But we do have an interaction between the cap and the liquid. The reason we purchase the cap is to stop the liquid. The parameter we change is the position of the liquid. So the correct functional description would be cap stops liquid. Let's see if this functional language stuff really works. Here's a bottle with liquid in a cap. I hold it over my head. No problems. Cap stops liquid. Now let's try it this way. Bottle, liquid, no cap. Oh, that's cold. <sighs> yeah, I would say cap stops liquid. How about this one? What's the main useful function of a book? Did you see the trick question? And that leads us to rule number two. Rule number two says the subject, action, and object must all be present together. Otherwise, the system description is incomplete. It's only after the object is introduced, myself, that it becomes clear. Book informs person. Here's one. What's the main useful function of a helmet? Go ahead, think about it. I'll wait. <clears throat> Ooh, don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say helmet protects head. I knew you were going to say it. And that leads us to rule number three. Rule number three says avoid ambiguous actions like protects and cleans. Remember rule number one? They must change a parameter of the object. Just like there's no crying in baseball, there's no protect or cleans in trees. Okay, so we know that there's no protects in trees, therefore the main useful function of a helmet must be something else. And in trees terms we say, helmet stops the road from getting to my head. And here's some final tips for functional language. Tip number one. The functional actions should be described simply and precisely, but avoid jargon and specifics. Use words that an eight-year-old would understand. At Intel, we use words like etch or polish, but both of these describe ways to remove material. Why this tip? Because using explicit words imparts psychological inertia that automatically limits your thinking. More about that later. Tip number two is, you have the right to break any of these rules as long as you know the rule you're breaking. Okay, that ends our short course on trees functional language, but I have some homework for you. How would you describe the interaction between a cell phone and its signal? Have a good week. We'll see you later. Are you crying? No. Are you crying? Oh. Are you crying? There's no crying. There's no crying in baseball!